recording. All right, here we go and in three, two, one. This episode of the Swoopcast is brought to you by the Spitballin Podcast. That's Spitballin Podcast. Uh, we're he- we here at Swoopcast are thrilled to finally be taking about some baseball with our new sponsors, the Spitballin Podcast. We know that we give you some of the best football and basketball coverage in the world for Ohio State, but baseball is booming and you have now found your new MLB pod. Take a listen to Spitballin' Podcast by your very own Sloopcast Austin and his buddy Reed, who is a lifetime baseball fan. Just like here, there will be some shenanigans, but there will also be be unbiased MLB coverage from someone who has grown up around the game as well as someone who is brand new to the game. That is Spitballin' Podcast, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many other podcast streaming platforms. I just took a bite of food, Kyle. Vamp. <laughs> <laughs> you hungry over there? <laughs> I spent all day in the yard and cleaning the house. I mean, no, I definitely didn't clean the house today. That didn't happen. Uh, but <laughs> it's the ADHD. Sometimes you're so focused on the thing you're doing that you don't notice that you're hungry. Um well, especially with, and then like add Adderall on top of that. And you just, you, sometimes you just don't notice until yeah. you stop. Anyway, yep. that's mental illness awareness for today's episode. Uh, ADHD is a neuro atypical, is a neuro atypicality, not, not a mental illness for the record. I know that. Don't correct me. I know. Um, all right, Kyle, are you, are you let's, ready? Let's jump in. Yep, let's jump into it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right here, Jared. It's it was Not, a tough weekend. Yeah. It was a it was a tough weekend for a lot of people. Uh, especially Buckeye Nation, football fans yeah. in general. It's news news we didn't want to hear, but uh, yeah, we're we're all we'll, we'll spend this episode talking about um, the passing of um, Dwayne Haskins uh, Saturday morning, yeah, or excuse me, Friday, yeah, Saturday morning, and yeah, it's yeah, it, tough. Uh, it's tough yeah there's no words good words to really summarize my feelings about it it's it's tough. too yeah, young it's, it's yeah i mean one too young um i i have long held out the hope that like haskins had a a redemption arc in his career I think the Washington situation was bad for him on multiple levels. And I, he was still so young. Like he, he graduated, he didn't graduate. He left Ohio state very young. Um, he entered the NFL very young. Um, he was only 24, almost 25. He would have been 25 at the beginning of the season. Um, I was really hoping, um, when Roethlisberger missed a few games in Pittsburgh last year that they were going to put him in instead of Rudolph, that unfortunately didn't happen. I don't understand why. Cause it, to me with Haskins, you at least had like potential upside. Whereas Rudolph is a guy who's going to take you to like a six and 10 schedule. Right. So, I mean, at least with Haskins, maybe there was some secret upside somewhere. Um, yeah. Because the talent was there. The intelligence was there both on the field and off. Like he was a very intelligent person, a, a good leader. Um, it's, it sucks. And I honestly was still 
and it, 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 sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't, but every once in a while you, you do get this situation where a quarterback finds it later in his career. Like how many people, you know, you might have to be our age or older. Drew Brees was considered a bust at one point. Did you know that? Struggled bad his first couple years in San Diego. Did you know Drew Brees played in San Diego? Yeah. Um, struggled every, every, terribly. Almost, almost every player has has their had their struggles. Yeah. And it's Dwayne Haskins was no different. And yeah, I I felt like coming to Pittsburgh, he he was going to get his chance, and and we hope that he'd be able to um to um really take that step forward in his career. And, and I not, think it was not, a not great. Just, not ju- no, sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was gonna say not just not just like football, but I mean just even as like a person, just how much how much he meant to the community and anybody else that he was around too. Just such a positive type of person, and just he he kind of sp- his his enjoyment, his um his smile was very. Uh, spreading like it, it just spread to everybody else yeah uh it just a, a guy that no one had anything negative to say about and i think that's anyone who knew him anyone who knew him didn't have a negative thing to say about him um it's like i i don't know what to say sometimes other than like it sucks um gangland in our chat says just sucks yeah um yeah, um, Michigan Bucknut. Um, I lost it when I saw the video of the kid playing Carmen, Ohio on the violin in front of the memorial at the shoe. Yeah, that's that's rough. That's that's real rough. Um, I, it feels like. Yeah. Yeah, Stuart, I just I don't even want to go there. I'm trying to like I totally, totally agree, but like I just don't even want to. Let's let's not let's not distract from Haskins by talking about people being unprofessional and whatnot. But um, this was a guy who I think, in many ways, ushered in the new era of Ohio State. Sort of that transitional guy from the Urban era into the Day era, and of course he played under Urban, but it was also, you know. Day was on the roster and like, or, you know, on the coaching roster and you, you started to see Ohio state moving away from the quarterback draw and the quarterback dive and into like a more modern offense. And like it was Haskins leading that charge. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's tough. I'm trying to figure out who who said it in our Discord chat, and I'm struggling to to find. It, so I apologize, not giving credit here. Um, really stood out to me when when Haskins came in, um, not not just really elevated Ohio State in the passing game, but put Big Ten on notice. For sure. Just, just th- that year in 2018. Yeah, when he came in, when he came in for J T. Barrett coming into. Um, the Coming from game. behind to to beat Michigan, yeah, that's that will always have a special place in every Buckeye um, fan's heart for what he did there. Just just as much as what he did that that following year when he when he threw for six touchdowns against Michigan as well too. But that that 2018 season though, almost 5,000 passing yards, 50 touchdowns, 70 percent completion rating man that was just what a what a year just to watch that all unfold it was amazing 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 season yeah and the thing like that was the first time in a long time his the year he actually started against michigan where ohio state went to that game an underdog that was the year of the Michigan Revenge Tour. 
and this and that and yeah he totally he he dissected them he went full surgeon on them just slowly and methodically sliced them apart yeah exactly buckeye zach they were an underdog and they win 62 to 39 Clinical breakdown is what Gangland says. Um, yeah, it's, again, like, when we almost now expect, not even almost, we now expect to get the best quarterback recruits. We almost expect but Haskins to um, Fields and now to Stroud. Like, we almost expect their quarterbacks to go in the first round now. This was started by Haskins. This was started by Haskins and Day. That That's where this started. This new era of the Ohio State quarterback started with Dwayne Haskins. And so, I mean, as an example, sometimes, and I'm, I'm somewhat stealing this from, from Tony Gerdman, who said this on Twitter, but it's almost a cliche, the phrase, he rewrote the record book. Haskins rewrote the record book. He absolutely demolished the Ohio State record book. Yeah, I'm just trying to pull up what um, what was here that um, Dan Hope over at 11 Warriors posted here. He put together just all of the (laughs) records and the previous records that Dwayne Haskins either broke or tied to. And it's just... You have to scroll. Yeah. <laughs> you have to scroll to see it. <laughs> such, such, such a, yeah. Career leader in, uh, and I, let's see, is, I don't know if these are current, but I think these were current when, at the end of Haskins' Ohio State career. I don't know if any mm-hmm. of these have been broken since, but um, career completion percentage, 70%. Uh, beating JT Barrett's at 63.5. That's a slaughtering of a record break right there. That is. Passing yards per game, 245. Beating out JT Barrett's record of 188. That can't be right. That was the... This is what, <laughs> this is what Ohio State passing records were like before <laughs> Dwayne Haskins. He modernized the Ohio State passing passing record record book. Um, every quarterback no, should no, this, be seven. This, retire seven. I'm just reading down yeah. through the chats. Um, yeah. Well, this is this is funny. This is funny too, Jared. Uh, Four hundred yard passing games in a single season. Um, only um, Art had one, which was the record one. And Dwayne Haskins had five, which is yeah. also a career, which is a career total as well. Yeah. And the previous record was one. Yeah. <laughs> previous to Dwayne Haskins, an Ohio State quarterback only threw for 400 yards in a game one time. And he did it five times in a single season. And like I said, he modernized the Ohio State passing record book. Um, Ohio State's not had a great track record with quarterbacks if we're being honest previous to Haskins but everything turned with Haskins everything turned with Haskins yeah and if you and if you remember too that there was that one uh passing game I believe it was Northwestern he was one yard shy of getting 500 the only the only Ohio State quarterback to get 500 he was one yard short But yeah, just Haskins looking at Fields Fields looking at Stroud to McCord. Yeah, I think so, Zach. I think I think we're having I think we're looking at Stroud's last season at Ohio State, and then we see at least one season of Kyle McCord after that. Mm-hmm. And I think or that, Brown or Brown. I uh, I no, I like Brown. I just really like McCord. Like it's it's an embarrassment mm-hmm. of of riches in the Ohio State quarterback yeah. room right now. So. Moving back to Dwayne Haskins, um, mentioned mentioned a lot of the records, a lot of things that he did 
in his um, short career at Ohio State. What's what's the one thing that will that you'll remember him from, whether it's on or off the field? The the video that his I, I presume his dad took of him as a kid in the Ohio State locker room, basically calling his shot. Mm-hmm. that's that's it like it Dwayne Haskins saying I want to go to school here as a kid and having that video it's 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 almost too good like it's just it's if it were in a movie you'd think it were cheesy you know it's yeah renamed the big and then nine, player and then nine the years year award yeah and then nine years later who currently has that nine years later he comes off the the bench to beat Michigan too. Yeah, and him coming off the bench, which again is his only. It was I don't know if it was his only game, but it was his only game of significant time of actual competition time, outside of the one season he he only started one season at Ohio State. It's absolutely insane, what he accomplished in one year. And the culture shift. Again, like, we look at the record book before and after. We look at the state of Ohio State quarterbacking before and after. And, of course, Ryan Day deserves a lot of that credit as well. But Haskins was the one that broke that ice. And uh, he, it, just, he did it play, can't be understated. Yeah, he, he, he did play more... Um... But it was against UNLV. I'm just looking at the stats. He, but that was against UNLV. <laughs> but but also, it wasn't like real competition time. Yeah. The game yeah. was over. Correct. Yeah. All all the other games, they were all blowout wins um, in that 2017 season. Yeah. Most 200-yard passing games. Um, I can't. I think consecutive. It, consecutive, too. Most 300-yard passing games, most 400-yard passing games, consecutive 200-yard passing games, 14. That's all of them. And, and um, that, that, that's that's every game that he started. Yeah. <laughs> that's consistency. Um, mm-hmm. Absolutely uh, it bonkers. Uh, uh, single game records. 499 against Northwestern. Kyle, you were correct on that. Um Total number of completions against Purdue, 49. Uh, pass attempts, 73 versus Purdue. Threw the ball 73 times. Um, touchdown passes, 6 against Michigan. Uh, if you're looking for an on-the-field accomplishment during Haskins' time here at Ohio State, you 6 touchdowns and, and, and against remember, Michigan in a game in which you were the underdog. Yeah, and I and I remember that, that Purdue game, everybody, well, not everybody, there was a lot of people going after Haskins for that game and and this and that. It's like, no, he threw close to 500 yards in that game. He was not the reason Ohio State lost that game. Right. Um, yeah, that was a total defensive breakdown for sure. Um, by the way, uh, Stewart says, Day was the architect, Haskins was the builder. Yeah, I, I think that's a absolutely spot on and damn I say poetic way of saying that. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, Michigan Bucknut. That was absolutely the defense's problems. Um. By the way, just that most touchdowns in in a game at six. Did it twice. Did it twice. Uh, he tied. Two other people, J T. Barrett and Kenny Smooth Jazz Guyton. Gotta love, gotta love a Kenny Guyton. Reference, um, you do. By the way, Kyle, if you if you count rushing yards, he did go over 500 yards against Northwestern, as he has he holds the total offense record of 506 against Northwestern. 506 must have had a seven yard run game in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kyle. Uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, that that video, that video, yeah, it definitely, it definitely made it, it, it definitely made its round all year that year. Yeah, 
I think in it's, it was. I think uh, I think about every about every other game, somebody played that video, whether it was oh, Herb Street sure. or or somebody else. That but sure. I think to me, I that really was think it's that just year's, that. That was that year's version of. You know who Michael Thomas's uncle is? That was that year's <laughs> version of, hey, mm-hmm. you know he went yeah. to the same high school as LeBron James, right? Yeah. Like that was that was that year's version of that. Yeah, to to me, it's it's the meaning and what he did in his first start against Michigan. Just the the whole thing Jared mentioned about it was the revenge tour, and then Haskins Haskins just just destroyed obliterated Michigan in, the, in that game too. It was that, that game. I will always, I will always remember Haskins as a Buckeye. Yeah. Um, Kyle, let's, let's, let's do an ad break and we'll talk about Haskins some more on the other side. Art, am I doing it? Oh, I thought you were going to do it. I can do it if you want me to. I thought you were doing it this episode. <laughs> Fine. All right. Okay. All right. Um, this episode. This episode is um has is is has <laughs> is still brought to you by the Spitballing Podcast. Um, we here at the podcast are thrilled to finally be taking about some baseball with our new sponsors, the Spitballing Podcast. We know you. We know that we we give you some of the best football and basketball coverage in the world for Ohio State, but baseball is booming, and you have now found your new MLB pod. Take a listen to the Spitballing Podcast by our very own Swoopcast Austin, his buddy Reed, who is a lifetime baseball fan. Just like here, there will be some shenanigans, but there will also be some unbiased MLB coverage from someone who has grown up around the game as well as someone who is brand new to the game. That is Spitballin Podcast, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many other podcast streaming platforms. All right. Um, yeah, it's it's obviously tragic. Um, him coming off the bench, as Kyle mentioned. I mean, like, if you play at Ohio State, right? Sometimes you are... In the case of, gee, I don't know, John Cooper and Jim Tressel, uh, defined by what you do or don't do during the Michigan games. And for a guy who only started one season at Ohio State, he had two separate total, I mean, total victories, because as, as Kyle said, came back and won it uh, when he was, when Ohio State was down against Michigan. Uh, takes over for JT Barrett and destroys Michigan and then comes back and, and does it again the next year. Um, that that cannot be understated. Because, uh, like I said, at Ohio State, sometimes your career is defined by what you do against Michigan. Um, we also talked about him having f- five touchdown passes, um, six touchdown passes. Uh, sometimes, like... One of the things Kyle and I spent a lot of time doing uh, this last season was reminding everyone that, hey, I know C.J. Stroud doesn't look amazing yet. It's just for his game. Give him some time. My chair is deflating again. Um, Haskins had had no such issues. Uh, came in on his first start, granted, Oregon State. Oregon State was, especially at that time, one of the worst Power Five programs ever. Like, terrible. So, like, they were playing a, a Power Five school, but, like, a Power Five school that would probably go under 500 in a lot of the better, smaller conferences. Uh, but still comes in and five touchdowns in his very first game. Um, he had a 75 yard touchdown pass to Terry McLaurin finishes the game with 313 passing yards, uh, went 22 of 30. Uh, then there was the comeback win against Penn state, uh, 
against the whiteout and everything else, um, obviously a huge deal. You know, not, not you know, it's Penn State's not a rival or anything, so it, it is what it is. It's not Michigan, but still, you you play in the whiteout, you go down. This was a year in which the defense wasn't very good, which quite frankly helped Haskins pad a lot of these stats. Yeah, Benjamin Victor made a, an amazing play that game. Um, side note, imagine Benjamin Victor if he had been coached for four years by the, by the right coach, by Brian Hartline. Just imagine Benjamin Victor with four years under Hartline. Just, just going to say that one out loud real quick. Yeah. 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 I mean, there were, there were definitely Austin Mack man, as well. It, it, even just looking at it, like his wor his worst game was throwing at 56% against Nebraska, but still threw for 252 and a pair of touchdowns. That was his worst game. Yeah. Um, the 400, we already talked a little bit about it, but the 499 yard, uh, win over Northwestern Kyle, I think we, w the, the part about that story that we failed to like, it was the big 10 championship game. Yes. <laughs> like it was, it wasn't just like, cause like Northwestern, like, cause we're talking about, you know, 2018, we're talking a few years back at this point, Northwestern's one of those programs that like some years they're very good. And some years they're garbage. This was not a garbage version of, of Northwestern. Cause like, you just never know, right? Like pick a, pick a year out of the hat with Northwestern and are they good or are they not? I don't remember, but this was the big 10 championship game. This was allegedly the best team that the big 10 West had to offer up. And 499 passing yards later, Ohio state and, and Haskins win the game 45 to 24. And then, of course, wins the Rose Bowl as well. Um, this was a uh, pretty questionable maneuver by, I don't know, like they got slaughtered by Purdue that year, which, as as we said, not Haskins' fault by any means. It was a total defensive breakdown. Uh, but they don't get to the playoffs because of it, which, well, no need to rehash that. Um, nope. But, you know, they they go on and they and he's a Rose Bowl winning quarterback. Um, he, he has three touchdowns in that game, bringing him to a nice even fifty for the year. Um, yeah, it's it's sad. I don't I don't know. Like I don't know. I, I trying to do our best here to like celebrate him and talk about all of his accomplishments here at Ohio State instead of maybe focusing on on the sad parts, but it's obviously incredibly sad. Um, watching that, you know, watching the video of him in the locker room as a kid, the, the, the violin tribute outside the shoe. Um, it's all, it's all incredibly hard to watch. Um, and it's, it's just, it's just sucks. It's just very sad. And I kind of wish I had, better words in this moment for that. Um, but my honest reaction is this sucks and it's sad. Um, that's just my honest reaction to it. It's like so many other things in the world. It's not fair. And in the grand scheme of things, this type of tragedy is happening countless times a day around the world, especially in the Ukraine right now. But this was our guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? This, this, this person gave us an incredible amount of joy and he again, helped push the Ohio state program, which is what we are here to talk about and celebrate sort of push them into the new era and pushed Ohio mm -hmm. state into a new era and really created the new prototype for an Ohio state quarterback. And, none of that can be understated. Uh, yeah. All of that needs to be said and all of that needs to be celebrated. It's, it's an incredibly important figure. I mean, Kyle, legitimately, who in a single season had as big of an impact on Ohio State 
as Dwayne Haskins. In it's a, a Maurice Claret. That I mean, so in, legitimately. In a single, so in a single season, now you could argue it's not an entire season, but you could say Cardio Jones in in the um, in the uh, three yeah, and a half he games started that several he was games in the next year. I don't think yeah. I can count Cardell Jones. Um, I think you probably make a make a exception or a a note for for Hooker in one year starting at safety at Ohio State, basically bailed out Ohio State's uh, troubled defense and like even troubled offense. The dude scored more touchdowns than some prominent players on the offense that year from from the safety position. Um, Shroud could be argued for that one if he didn't return. I mean, he didn't have the option. I mean, I guess he could have just gone anywhere, right? Like, he could have yeah. gone to Canada for a year or something. But, yeah. Um, for sure. Um, for sure. The <sighs> right or wrong, sometimes you just have to sort of give it up for the person that does it first. And, again, like, Haskins is the new prototype. You know, Ryan Day was not yet the head coach. But we started to see what life under Ryan Day was going to look like when we saw Dwayne Haskins take the field. It wasn't the JT Barrett save us offense. It wasn't reliant on the quarterback run. It wasn't jump passes and jet sweeps. It was a legitimate passing offense. Yeah. And... Again, Haskins is the new prototype. Three games as head coach, so technically Haskins started the day day era. That wasn't that year, was it? Was it? Oh, it was. No, you're right, it was. Huh. How about that? Hadn't considered that. <laughs> yeah, because Haskins leaves and then Fields comes in and Fields committed today, not Meyer. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Hey. That's a, that, that, that's a good catch, Zach. Um, yeah, really did start the day era, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes I forget about those interim games. <laughs> yeah, that man, that Oregon State, like obviously we, we saw what we were going to get with Haskins and that was amazing. But we also saw what we were going to get from that defense. That was that Greg Schiano defense where like the linebackers always played up on the line and it was all or nothing. Mm-hmm. Alex Grinch as well. Um, but it was, it was like that all or nothing defense. Like it, Ohio State was either going to stifle them for a loss or give up an 85 yard touchdown. It was one of the two. Yeah. Anything else, Jared? Anything else you want to bring up or talk about Haskins? I know mentioned a lot of things about him, um, both um, what he's done for our state and the um, if any, impact yeah. and the records and all that. If anyone in the chat has anything they'd like to add, please go ahead at this time. Let's group cry in memoriam. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had that time. Um, but yeah, that's, it's tough and it sucks. And it sucks and it's tough and it's sad. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. again, sometimes I wish I was more, I could be a little bit more poetic on the spot. Um, but sometimes just being honest, even if it's in short sentences with small words, is, is still just as good. Because you know it's genuine, right? Um, and Ohio State's had its its share of tragedy in the past few years. You know, it's it's tough. I mean... Going back to Kara George, um, there's been 
number of former Ohio State players who've committed suicide in recent years. Um, there's, you know, I, I guess, I guess what we could classify it's a close call with Miller, and you know Will Smith. Going back a few years, like programs had its share of tragedy recently, and it can stop now. Like, <laughs> yeah, we we can stop this now. We we don't we we don't want any more. Um, yeah. Um, anyone else down in the chat want to say anything else? I think I'm. I think I'm tapped. I think Kyle's tapped. I think that's. I think that's what we're. I think that's. <laughs> gangland said he wants uh he wants met haskins and uh gangland i assume when you say that you mean you were on acid okay yes he says yes because <laughs> i think that could have been read either way yeah fair enough um I don't know what music to play. Like nothing feels appropriate right now. Um, you know what? No music. We're gonna go out on silence. It feels appropriate. Um. I and I'm le I'm a legitimate. You know what I'm gonna do? I just thought about this. I'm doing a full seven minutes of silence at the end of this episode. So feels i don't know it felt appropriate i just thought of it um if you're listening to this please feel free to skip forward when you'd like um you don't have to stick around for all seven minutes by any means but it, it feels like the right thing to do so a full seven minutes of silencing the end of this episode no music um kyle is there any uh do, do you want to do kyle's coin or anything like that or should we just go out at this point no let's let's go ahead and end today's episode all right uh, please stay tuned or, or don't, you can do whatever you want for seven minutes of silence in, in honor of Dwayne Haskins. <laughs>